In today's video, I'm going to go over the index of refraction. Of course, we want to be able to calculate the index of refraction and know what the index of refraction is because we're going to use this to do our calculations with Snell's law. And this, as we'll talk about in future videos, is a graphic representation of Snell's law. N1 and N2 are the indices of refraction for these two different materials through which this light ray is traveling. Okay, so let's just go on and talk about what the index of refraction is. The definition of the index of refraction, which is basically the same as the equation of the index of refraction, is simply N, N stands for the index of refraction, is equal to C divided by V, C being the speed of light in a vacuum. Now we know that the speed of light in a vacuum is a constant. It's 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And we're going to divide that by the speed of light um, in the material for which we're trying to calculate the index of refraction. So it's just the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light through the material for which we're trying to calculate the index of refraction. Now, another thing, a couple of things that the uh, index of refraction kind of gives you a conceptual idea of is how it kind of describes how fast light travels through the material. Okay, if this number is low, the lower the velocity gets, the higher the index of refraction. So if you have a material with a high index of refraction, something close to 2 or above 2, then you know that it's really dense and light travels more slowly through that material. If you have a material that has a lower index of refraction, something close to 1, then you know the velocity of that material, the velocity of light in that material is close to 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Okay, so it tells you something about how fast the light travels and it also tells you something about how optically dense the material is because the denser the material is, the slower the light will travel, the lower the speed of light through that material. Okay? So let's go through and kind of look at it a little bit and see how we get our index of refraction, our indices of refraction. Once again, the index of refraction is simply the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light through the material for which we're trying to calculate the index of refraction. And you'll notice here I have a table. The speed of light in a vacuum is 3.0 times 10 to the eighth. So you divide that by itself and you get one. So a vacuum has the index of refraction of one. The speed of light in air at standard temperature and pressure, well, air is slightly more dense than a vacuum, so the speed of light through air is slightly less. Now, it's very close to 3, but it's actually slightly less. And you'll notice if we divide 3.0 times 10 to the 8th by 2.997 times 10 to the 8th, you get a number that is close to 1. So these two, this 2 8 here, in the 10 thousandths, 28 10 thousandths, that really has no, is not going to have any significant effect on our calculations for most cases. So for most cases, we can, we know that the index of refraction of a vacuum is one, and we usually take the index of refraction of air at standard temperature and pressure to also be one. Okay. Now water is significantly denser than air. So it has a, uh, the light has a lower speed when it travels through water. So therefore, when we take 3.0 times 10 to the eighth, we divide that by 2.26 times 10 to the eighth, we get a number that's greater than one. So you can see the index of refraction of water is 1.33. And you'll notice we're dividing a velocity meters per second by another velocity meters per second. Both those meters per second will therefore cancel, and the index of refraction is 1.33 without any units. It's a unitless number. Okay, now we can continue to do the same thing. Quartz is denser, divide, we get a higher number. Glass is even denser, we divide, we get an even higher number. And sapphire is denser, so therefore the light travels even more slowly through that material. So when we divide 3.0 times 10 to the 8th by this even smaller number, we get a higher index of refraction. So you should notice, conceptually, it's a good thing to know, as the material gets more dense, the, the speed of light will decrease and therefore the index of refraction will go up like that, okay? So let's go through and do a couple quick official calculations. Here is a problem. We have the speed of light in diamond is 1.24 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. We want to know what is the index of refraction of diamond. Well, we simply have our equation here, n, the index of refraction, is going to be equal to the speed of light in a vacuum, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th, divided by the speed of light in that material, in this case diamond, and we divide those two, the units cancel, and we get that n is equal to 2.42. Now that's pretty hot. You often don't see indices of refraction higher 
than two, and this is much higher than two, so this is a pretty optically dense material, and light travels pretty slowly in a diamond. Okay, the next one here, uh, the other thing you can do is you can calculate um, the actual speed of light through the material if you're given the index of refraction. So here's our equation. We're going to rearrange this to solve for V. V is equal to the speed of light divided by the index of refraction, the speed of light in a vacuum. So that means that V is going to be equal to 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by the index of refraction, which in this case is 1.52. And therefore we divide, and you get that the speed of light in glass is 1.97 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. All right, so those are really the two main kind of calculations you're going to do when you actually use and want to calculate the index of refraction. C is a constant, so you can calculate N or you can calculate V. If you want to calculate N, you divide C by V. If you want to calculate V, you divide C by the index of refraction. And once again, the higher the index of refraction, the lower the velocity of light through that material. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Um, if you found that helpful, please give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment in the comment section below, and we will see you in the next video.